Okay, one last sip for good luck. All right, I am ready. Okay. Work Hard, Playlist Hard, second edition, written and narrated by Mike Warner. Work Hard, Playlist Hard, written and narrated by Mike Warner. Work Hard, Playlist Hard, second edition, written and narrated by Mike Warner. The end. Work Hard, Playlist Hard, written and narrated by Mike Warner. The end. Yep. I'm good to skip over that, absolutely. Um, so I've got page 10, introduction. Okay. <clears throat> Introduction. This book shares everything I wish I knew when I started out. It also details vital parts of my journey, from a keen music lover and starving music producer, to a successful streaming music nerd who makes a living in this beautiful, crazy industry. It is the result of many conversations with friends, artists, labels, and managers. I suggest grabbing a pen and paper. I've been a music lover my entire life with a music collection of funk, hip-hop, punk, rock, electronic, ska, and everything in between. I spent 20 years DJing, hosted multiple podcasts and radio shows, helped numerous artists transition to becoming independent. I also produced music under various aliases and worked with a few background music services. After many years of trying to break into the music industry, applying to multiple jobs, I concluded that my resume was not strong enough. I decided to build my own opportunities through self-education. What I've learned is that artists today have more power, tools, and opportunity than ever before. They just need to be given the right knowledge to succeed. Many pieces of advice I share are inspired by a question from an artist. This book is written as though I am telling you how to set up an artist for success through the use of streaming services all while building value in your brand through strong prep. Many pieces of advice I share are inspired by a question from an artist. This book is written as though I am telling you how to set up an artist for success through the use of streaming services, all while building value in your brand through strong playlist curation. These insights are for artists, managers, label reps, or any of the many new roles in the music industry. This second edition is no longer just focused on playlist pitching and curation. It has grown into so much more than that. It's packed full of tools and features that are available to help an artist get their music in front of a wider audience and provide them with strategies for long-term growth across many platforms. That being said, sections of this book will still be similar to the first edition with its focus on playlists and curation. In addition, you'll see a focus on online presence, data, tools, and all of the things that can help an artist to grow. Without further ado, welcome to Work Hard, Playlist Hard, the second edition. Here we go. What is a playlist? A playlist is a list of songs that can be listened to through a DSP. The playlist can be listened to either sequentially or in a shuffled order. 
DSP means Digital Service Provider. A DSP can be a retail store like iTunes or a music streaming provider such as Spotify, Apple Music or Deezer. Playlists have existed for many years in many mediums, from cassette tapes to radio, but we will exclusively be referring to playlists on DSPs. Playlists can help a new audience to discover your music through association. Similar to changing stations on your TV or radio stations in your car, playlists offer a variety of music from both independent and label artists. Over 75,000 songs are added to a DSP every single day in the United States alone. Let that sink in for a second. Playlists help you to stand out from all of the other songs. Think of them as a public showcase of music with uncapped potential reach. Artists have found themselves being able to create major tours, sign lucrative record deals, gain placement in films and television shows, and even quit their day jobs. These and many other stories are becoming more common as artists find a way to monetize their craft and be strategic with playlist pitching to ensure their music reaches as many ears as possible. These? Yeah. These and many other stories are becoming more common as artists find a way to monetize their craft and be strategic with playlist pitching to ensure their music reaches as many ears as possible. There are countless types of playlists out there. Each playlist has a different kind of value and method required. Editorial playlists. Editorial playlists are curated by staff who work directly for the streaming platform. These can provide significant streaming numbers, but should not be your only goal, as these curators rarely communicate with artists. I'll, I want to do that one again, actually. Editorial playlists. Editorial playlists are curated by staff who work directly for the streaming platform. These can provide significant streaming numbers, but should not be your only goal, as these curators rarely communicate with artists and their support is never guaranteed. While some of these editorial curators don't have a strong online presence, there are a few exceptions. How can I find an editorial playlist? Editorial playlists are easily identified because the curator username matches the DSP. Spotify, for example, will show created by Spotify on each playlist that they own. As an exercise, Take a look at the following editorial playlists. Ideally, you should follow playlists that you would like to see your music placed on. I'll do that part again, actually. As an exercise, take a look at the following editorial playlists. Ideally, you should follow playlists that you would like to see your music placed on. This helps you to get a better understanding of what the editors are looking for. On Amazon Music, all hits. Country Heat, Pop Culture, on Apple Music, Dance XL, New Music Daily, Today's Hits, on Deezer, Acoustic Pop, Deezer Hits, Urban Hits, on Spotify, Beast Mode, Mint, Peaceful Piano, Today's Top Hits, on YouTube Music, Alternative Hot List, Highline R&B, Pop Hit List. Who are these editorial curators? Yeah, no problem. On YouTube Music, Alternative Hot List, Highline R&B, Pop Hot List. Who are these editorial curators? While most editorial curators fly under the radar and prefer to remain while most editorial curators fly under the radar and prefer to remain a mystery, there are a few that are active on social media. Follow them and familiarize yourself with what they are looking for. Then, when the time is right, make your move. User I'm just gonna grab a drink before this next one. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, I'm ready. User-generated playlists. Also known as third-party playlists, these are curated by regular users. Also known as third-party playlists, these are curated by regular users like yourself who make their playlists public for anyone to follow and stream. By making a connection with the owners of these playlists, you may have a better chance of receiving future support from them. One benefit of user-generated playlists is that you have an opportunity to find that user and connect with them through social media, email, or other means. They are usually a lot more accessible than editorial curators. How can I find a user playlist? If you look at the created by section, under the description, you will see a name. Click on that name and it will take you to their profile. You will clearly see the word user on their profile. How do I contact the curator? Here are a few strategies to try and locate playlist owners. Of course, these are only suggestions and may not work for every person. The first one is a sneaky tactic I've found works in some instances. Google image search. Google allows you to take a screenshot of the user's profile picture, then upload it to Google and search for matching instances of that image. If the photo is a unique photo of that person, you may find links to their social media or website in the search results. People tend to use the same profile picture across all social media. Visit images.google.com to use this feature. Facebook. Spotify allows users to sign in with their Facebook credentials, which also uses their current Facebook profile photo and name on their Spotify profile. A quick Facebook search can often match the name and photo to the profile in Spotify. Chartmetric. Chartmetric has data for millions of playlists across various DSPs. When possible, the website and social media URLs for the curator will be listed. This can be useful when trying to find a way to contact the curator through social media. Brand playlists. Many brands have utilized pl brand playlists. Many brands have utilized playlists to reach their customers outside of their stores. Brand playlists keep customers connected and offer some nice benefits in the way of free advertising. For example, Nike has running playlists. Disney has sing-along playlists. Starbucks has a latte playlists. See what I did there? Celebrities or influencers can also be verified with a brand account. Those are usually very hard to contact without having a direct contact with the management company. Who runs these brand playlists? Usually someone on the marketing team is in charge of curation. However, there are some companies that have a music department which oversees live performances, music for TV commercials and playlists, Who runs these brand playlists? Usually someone on the marketing team is in charge of curation. However, there are some companies that have a music department which oversees live performances, as well as music for TV commercials and playlists. The best way to find a lead is by doing a quick internet search. There's a... The best way to find a lead is by doing a quick internet search. There's often at least one blog post that spotlights their curators. Background music services. Background music services. Ask your parents, or maybe even grandparents, what Muzak is, and you may be surprised. This is not a new thing. Background music, also known as in-store or overhead music, has been around for many years. Fortunately, music has evolved from elevator music to feature various music from independent to established artists. This is free money, as I like to say. Most background music services will only add music that's directly licensed to them, meaning the only way to get your music played in stores they service, and to get paid for that play, is to license your music to them. This doesn't mean that they own your music, it means that they have permission to use it. Of course, always read any contract. Imagine shopping in Macy's, 
hearing your song blasting through the speakers and seeing someone whip out their phone to Shazam it. This additional exposure can lead to a growing fan base on Apple Music and Spotify and other platforms. Shazam now even allows users to directly stream songs previously Shazammed in full. This counts as a play, and you can even add your, quote, my Shazammed tracks, end quote, playlist on both services. To get you started, I have listed a selection of background music services that have previously accepted submissions from me. Reach out via their general email on their website, first asking for their music submission process. Once you have the correct contact information, follow up with your most recent single only. If they like your latest release and want your whole back If they like your latest release and want your whole back catalog of music, they will ask you. Don't send everything in the first email. Mood Media, Nightlife Music, Play Network, RX Music, Sound Machine, Soundtrack Your Brand. Stingray Music, and Store Play. Tastemaker Playlists. These are much more rare to see. In Spotify, when you go to a user's profile, instead of seeing user next to their profile photo, it will say Tastemaker. Rumor has it that tastemakers have earned this status through solid curation. Why are tastemakers so valuable? Spotify doesn't go into great detail about tastemakers, but it's believed that if a tastemaker places a song, this could contribute to a song's placement across various editorial playlists. Where can I find tastemakers? Spotify used to show tastemakers in the browse section of the app. There used to be a section called who to follow that suggested friends and other curators, but this has since been removed. The only current way is to simply ask around and look at the profile page for every user. If you see Tastemaker, copy that URL and add it to a spreadsheet. Start keeping track of these as you come across them. Algorithmic playlists. Curated by robots, fed by metadata, these playlists deliver music. <laughs> Curated by robots, fed by metadata, these playlists deliver music to each user based on their listening habits and taste. These playlists include Release Radar, Discover Weekly, and Your Daily Mix on Spotify. One of the best ways to make sure that your music has every opportunity to be heard on these playlists is by adding as much detail as possible. When filling out editorial submission forms and uploading music through a distributor, when filling out editorial submission forms, and uploading music through a distributor. Wow, one more time. One of the best ways to make sure your music has every opportunity to be heard on these playlists is by adding as much detail as possible. When filling out editorial submission forms and uploading the music through your distributor, be sure to always include as much detail as possible. Personalized editorial. These playlists are curated by staff, but playlist songs and order are customized for each listener. For example, if you and someone next to you both open Spotify and follow the playlist called Weekend Hangouts, the playlist will be different for each of you. This is because Spotify creates a pool of up to 600 songs that are available for each personalized editorial playlist. This is because Spotify creates a pool of up to 600 songs that are available for each personalized editorial playlist, depending on the listener. Each listener's playlist is then capped at around 100 songs, resulting in a very different and personalized experience for each individual listener. The good thing about these playlists is that there are more opportunities for more artists to get heard from these playlists because the bank of music is larger. Distributor playlists. It's not uncommon for record labels and distributors to also curate their own playlists. Here are a few examples. Topsify, Filter, Digster. Other distributors also curate under their own names. CD Baby, Ditto, DistroKid, 
and TuneCore. Artist playlists. Artist playlists can grow very quickly with the right network of supportive fans. These are extremely valuable as the artist has full control over the music that is featured. It's not uncommon for artists that are no longer it's not uncommon for artists that are no longer creating new music to still have well-maintained playlists. These playlists will always be a home for fans to enjoy their music. Plus, if the playlist has a significant following, it is highly valuable to the artist's manager or label who can include songs from similar artists in the playlist to give them a boost as well. Update your playlist regularly. Contributed by Nina Las Vegas. When promoting my own playlist on Spotify, I've found that consistency is key. People return to your playlist if they know you update it regularly. As someone who follows a lot of playlists to find new music, I know I get annoyed when they're barely refreshed. So I try to keep that mentality when working on my own. My track IDs playlist is updated every two weeks and I make sure to promote it across as many platforms as possible. Every two weeks, I do a little drawing, something that my followers have become familiar with since Instagram started. I always tag the smaller emerging artists in my posts when I share, as those are the people that are most excited to share their placements. These days, with TikTok also driving a lot of playlisting awareness, I film myself drawing each little promo tile and post that on the platform. Nina's Track IDs playlist can be found on Spotify. Find out more about Nina at ninalasvegas.com. Podcast and blog playlists, contributed by Bree Noble. Many podcasts and blogs, especially if they're based on a particular theme, curate playlists from the songs that they feature. As the founder of the women of, as the founder of the Women of Substance Music podcast, I produce several themed podcast episodes each year that I curate into playlists. Some examples include the Love Songs for Valentine's series, the Music with a Conscience series, and my Holiday series. Since the podcast is already curated with high quality music around a very specific theme, Combining the songs from the series into a playlist is a perfect fit. I don't just promote the playlists through my own channels. I get all the artists on board promoting it to their fans, asking them to like, listen and share because it benefits everyone. So when submitting music to a podcast or blog, search Spotify to see if that platform also creates playlists. These are very worthwhile opportunities to pursue because they offer a double dose of exposure. Find out more about Brie at brienoble.com. Let's get social. If you haven't already, sign up for the following social media accounts. If you are against social media, it's time to suck it up and accept that for many people in this industry, it is the fastest way to make initial contact, forge a friendship, find your fans, and continue the relationship when they stop streaming. Here are five platforms, at the very least, you should claim a username on. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok. Use the same username for all services. This is important for consistency and helping people find you. If you are found at jsmithtunes on Instagram, then your Twitter handle should be at jsmithtunes. Make it easy for your fans from your other platforms to tweet, mention, or follow you. To keep it consistent, do a quick check on all social media sites before locking in your username. For example, go to facebook.com slash jsmithtunes, instagram.com slash jsmithtunes, facebook.com slash jsmithtunes, instagram.com slash jsmithtunes, etc. to see if the username is available. You can do this from a web browser much more quickly than by searching in the apps. Here's a site you can use to check out all of the socials at the same time. Checkusernames.com. 
if any new social media apps or sites launch after this book is released, please also sign up for those. Even if it is just to claim your unique username, if a new social media platform takes off, you want to have your handle locked in, just in case. Of course, I'm not going to tell you to sign up and then, quote, get to work, end quote. Below are tips on creating a good social media profile and where and how to find your first contacts. Once you've found them, don't do anything yet. Write them down on that piece of paper I had you grab earlier. Golden rules when creating profiles on social media. Give professional information and use a name you are serious about. Your real name or artist name should be what you lead with on your public pages. Use a real photo of your face. Show that you are a real person. Don't post crowd shots or a picture of the back of your head staring into the sunset. Don't use fake credentials. Don't undersell. Don't use fake credentials. Don't undersell yourself either. If you have been producing music for two weeks, don't include that in your bio. You can try something else like music producer from Australia. If people want to know more, they will ask you. It's important to let your audience know which platforms you are most active on. That way, if they use multiple social media platforms, they know which one they are going to see the most content from you on. As an author and executive, I post most frequently on LinkedIn. That's the platform where I spend most of my time and that's the one I promote first. Artists may find themselves more frequently on Instagram, Twitch or Twitter. Put some thought into what kinds of posts you put on each platform. For example, behind the scenes studio photos work best on Instagram. Quick spontaneous thoughts work great for Twitter and achievements and professional developments are most appropriate for LinkedIn. Make a plan and grind it out. Contributed by Troy Carter Jr. My advice to all artists across the globe would be to set an intention. Set intent for your career, outline the direction you want to go in and get everybody on your team on the same page. Walk, run or fly in that direction, but have a direction. The game is more competitive than it's ever been. Ultimately, you have to be intentional with everything that you're doing. This includes the music that you are releasing, the time you release it, when your music videos are coming out, what you're posting on social media. There's an underlying myth that you just kind of, quote, make it, end quote, which is never the case. Anybody you see that is very successful today got there through a very deliberate plan of action. Anybody you see that is very successful today got there through a very deliberate plan of action. Even though, even though releases may seem spontaneous, they aren't. They are extremely calculated and artists at every level have to adapt to the climate of the industry we're in. My advice is to set some intent, write a plan, and then grind it out. Good luck to everybody reading. I'm doing the same thing. Find out more about Troy at Diamond ent.org record labels versus distributors contributed by jay gilbert people often refer <clears throat> people often refer to major labels when they mean major music groups and or major distributors distributor examples include ingrooves the orchid symphonic or DistroKid. Label examples include Atlantic, Sub Pop, New West, and none such. The terms label and distributor are frequently used interchangeably. The truth is they are completely different animals with very little overlap of roles and responsibilities. Let's look at the differences. Generally speaking, distributors typically handle global digital distribution and monetization physical and digital product release coordination, best practices and troubleshooting across DSPs and social platforms, surface insights and analytics on release, surface insights and analytics on release performance, 
pitching to DSPs for playlists and marketing platforms, content ID and channel optimization on YouTube, social media verifications, rights management, pitching for syncs, potentially, pseudo videos, a cover image with audio bed. Generally speaking, labels typically handle release strategy and marketing plan, radio, photography, sync licensing, placing advertising, full digital marketing strategy, online assets, music videos and lyric videos, events except in-store events. Find out more about Jay at label-logic.net. Just gonna grab some water. <clears throat> Artist profiles and DSP tools. Even if you only have one song released, this is crucial. It's essential to have a profile with as much information as possible. If your song gets in front of the editorial team at a major streaming service, your artist profile is the first thing they will see. If you have a photo, brief biography, and an artist playlist, you'll be well ahead of other artists who don't. In the first edition of this book, I shared direct links to artist portals on each DSP and urged you to sign up. Since then, the amount of tools that are provided for artists have gone far beyond simply the ability to upload a profile photo and a bio. A lot of DSPs are also providing a suite of marketing tools that can be used. The best part is that these tools are provided absolutely free. As such, something that was once as such, something that was once just a single chapter is now going to be a significant portion of this book. I highly suggest creating a quick checklist as we go to make sure that you have claimed your artist profile on each platform and you are aware of the tools and features that they offer. Please be aware that not every streaming platform and tool will be covered in this book. These are the platforms I have had experience using and feel comfortable sharing. It's also worth noting that since the previous edition, Google Play has now been shut down and replaced by YouTube Music. Spotify for Artists. <clears throat> Spotify for Artists. Requesting access to Spotify for Artists was quite a challenge initially. Artists would need a minimum of 250 followers on Spotify and would have to answer a series of questions, then wait four plus weeks hoping for a response. Fortunately, this process has become much quicker and various music distributors offer a way to get access almost instantly. Let's go through the steps here. Visit artists.spotify.com and click Get Access. On the next screen, continue. Type in the artist name or paste the artist's Spotify link in the search box. Click on the artist name from the search results. On the next screen, you will see one of two options. Option number one. If your distributor has a connection with Spotify, they will have a way for you to fast track the verification process. This can save you lots of waiting time and sometimes give instant access. If presented with this option, take it. Option two. Option two. Log in with your Spotify account. It can be a free or premium account and continue the manual verification. <clears throat> option two. Log in with your Spotify account, free or premium, and continue with the manual verification process. After following the above steps, you will either receive instant verification or an email detailing when you can expect to receive access. Spotify artist profile. Profile and banner photo. Profile and banner photos capture people's attention when they view your profile. It shows that you have taken the time to update your profile and make this into a home for your fans. Avoid text and logos in your photo. Keep in mind parts of the photos will be cropped, so there may be some trial and error with uploading different images to find your perfect fit. We had to upload a few different images 
before finding the right one for our artist profile for date night. About. In this section, you can add multiple photos, a bio, and social media links. Image gallery. Uploading photos to the image gallery is extremely important. By uploading, you are giving Spotify permission to use these images in various marketing communications, such as release radar, new release announcements, and upcoming shows in your city, which are sent out through email. Spotify can also use an image if you have uploaded at least one in your profile. It can lead to some awesome free marketing, so upload these photos. As an example, we have seen our images used in email blasts from Spotify announcing upcoming concerts and shows, as well as emails sharing new releases for that week. Bio. A biography tells your story and helps new fans to learn a little more about you and your music. While editing your bio, you can type at and link to any other artist, playlist, song, or album on Spotify. Can't find the right artist in the search results? You can type at and paste the Spotify URI or URL directly after to make sure you link to the correct source. Artists Pick. The Artists Pick feature allows you to showcase a song, album, podcast, playlist, fundraiser, or concert at the top of your artist profile. This is a great way to this is a great way to promote a new single or playlist. Each pick expires after 14 days, so make a note in your calendar to update these every two weeks. Bonus tip. It's rumoured Spotify see what artists have set as their artist pick. Perhaps feature an editorial playlist you've got your eye on to get their attention, or as a way to publicly say thank you to a curator. More info. This is where you can link fans to your social media where they can also follow you and learn more about you. As a listener, when I find a new artist I like on Spotify, I often follow them. Then I click through to their social media and I follow them there as well. This is another way to capture new fans and continue to engage with them on other platforms. Current platforms include Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Wikipedia. Spotify promo cards. This allows you to create a quick custom graphic to share on social media. You can share This allows you to create a quick custom graphic to share on social media. You can share a milestone, for example, 25,000 followers, or a new song, even a podcast episode. You can change the color and size to square, portrait, or landscape. You will also receive a link that you can share. While there is no current indication these links are tracked, it's safe to assume you may be able to see how many people click your customized links in future. This tool is available at promocards.byspotify.com. You can now create milestone cards for reaching 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, all the way up to 10 million followers on Spotify. You can also create these for chart milestones, new releases, live shows, and dozens of eligible editorial playlist ads. Spotify Canvas. Spotify has a cool feature called Canvas. These are eight second vertical video loops or visuals that show when a song is playing. You can see these in the now playing view in the Spotify mobile app. As of February 2021, all artists can now create a canvas for songs through the Spotify for Artists app on the web or on their phone. Spotify even has a canvas designer category. Spotify even has a canvas designer category on their Sound Better platform, which helps artists find a designer to create a canvas for them. You can create yours at canvas.spotify.com. Spotify and Song Kick. Spotify and Song Kick. 
Spotify has an integration with Songkick, which allows artists to list their shows and live streams via the On Tour tab on their Spotify profile. Concerts and live streams can be added to Songkick using the Songkick toolbox, which can be found at tourbox.songkick.com slash artists. Live streams are not instantly added and need to be approved by the Songkick team before they will appear. This can take a few days, so make sure to list these as early as possible. Songkick can be connected by logging into Spotify for Artists and going to Profile, then Concerts. Once concerts are displaying correctly on an artist profile, they can also be highlighted as the artist pick at the top of the artist profile. Spotify Lyric Search. Did you know that you can search for a song in Spotify by entering some of its lyrics? Let's say a fan heard a song on the radio or in a TikTok post. If they didn't catch the name, they can type in some of the lyrics they remember. For example, if I heard a song with the words Little Blue Balloon, I could enter it into the search and get results for that for any song that includes those lyrics. Spotify Lyrics Search is powered by Music's Match. If you don't have an artist profile on Music's Match, you'll need to upload and deliver the lyrics to Spotify and have them indexed and searchable on Spotify. This is extremely valuable for discovery as it presents another way that fans can find your music. Lyric Search is different from synchronized lyrics, which scroll to show lyrics in time with the music similar to karaoke. Spotify Artist Playlists Spotify allows you to feature any playlist on an artist page under the Artist Playlists section. While there is no way to curate a playlist using your public artist profile, you can curate a playlist from your regular Spotify account as a user, make it public, and feature that on an artist profile. Some artists use this section to highlight playlists their music has been supported on and playlists they would like to see their music featured on in the future. Here's how to add artist playlists using your computer. First, log into Spotify for Artists on your desktop. Go to Profile and scroll down to Artist Playlists and click the plus button. From here, type the name of the playlist or paste the Spotify link into the search box. Click on the playlist name to add it. Repeat this step to add multiple playlists. You can also rearrange the order by clicking and dragging and then click Save. The process is similar on your phone. Log into the Spotify for Artists app on your phone. Tap the profile icon. Tap the profile icon and scroll down to Artist Playlists and tap on Edit. Tap Add Playlist. Type the name of the playlist into the search box. Tap on the playlist to add it. You can press and drag to rearrange the order. Click Save once you're done. Now, the next time you go to the artist profile in the Spotify app and scroll down, you will see these playlists under the artist playlists section. Spotify editorial playlist pitching. Spotify submission forms were floating around the web for a few years. For the fortunate few artists that located these mysterious Google forms, the links were closely guarded and rarely shared. With major labels and distributors able to pitch priority releases to Spotify and their editorial team through other means, many independent artists express their feelings of being left out in the cold. Now, all users of Spotify for Artists have the opportunity to submit a song to the relevant editorial team. If you have an upcoming release, for example, a song that has been uploaded via if you have an upcoming release that has been uploaded by a distributor but is not out yet, you will see an option at the top of your Spotify Artists dashboard allowing you to submit a song. If your upcoming release is an album, you will only be able to submit one song from the album. Click Pitch from Next Release to get started.
You can also find eligible songs by navigating to the music tab and then clicking upcoming. From here, you can click pitch a song. Once you submit a song, Spotify will ask you to add details relating to the genre and subgenre. You can also share mood, moment, and even the location associated with your release. In the submission form, it's important to add as much detail as possible. This information is attached to your song and will help it to be delivered to the right audience. For instance, if you create beautiful instrumental piano music, you want to make sure it reaches the classical editorial team. Correct information means your song will be delivered to various listeners through editorial and algorithmic playlists and artist radio stations in Spotify. In the next screen, you can add a city. While this can be your hometown, it's best to choose a city where your music has the strongest cultural connection, even if it's not your hometown or current city. You can also describe your song for Spotify using 500 characters or less. This is where you can tell this is where you tell a compelling and short story about the song. If you don't have a marketing budget, there's no need to mention it. If you can't craft a good short story about your song, play it to someone who has not heard it before and ask them to describe it in a few sentences. Bonus tip. Spotify has also released a large number of additional genres to choose from when submitting music. Previously, artists with a niche genre found it tough to find an exact match when submitting. While there is currently a mind-blowing 5,521 genre-shaped descriptions, while there is currently a mind-blowing 5,521 genre-shaped distinctions on Spotify at the time of writing, not all will be available on the submission form. You can find most of these genres at everynoise.com. Everynoise.com. I have included an example from a successful pitch below. In this case, I am terrible with words, so I asked the in this case i am terrible with words so i asked the featured singer songwriter to write something compelling this is what they wrote love just like the phone on which it's often sparked seems to fall prey to planned oh my gosh I'll grab some water before i do this <clears throat> <clears throat> love just like the phone on which it's often sparked seems to fall prey to planned obsolescence long after the club lights cool after all the sweaty clothes come off after a dozen broken hearts and a hundred bad decisions you wouldn't fault a person these days for their suspicion of commitment then again that might also be the moment someone's finally ready it's safe to say that that pitch was well received as the song ended up on two massive editorial playlists on Spotify, Pop Chill Out and Weekend Hangouts. Spotify release radar reach. One very important piece of information that is often overlooked is that your song will be added into release radar for all of your followers if you submit at least seven business days before release day. Here's what's great about this. If you have 5,000 followers, that equals 5,000 release radar playlists that your song will be added to that week. If you've submitted for playlist consideration at least seven days in advance, your track will automatically be shared to your followers on their release radar playlist on release day. Songs that are submitted fewer than seven days in advance are not guaranteed placement on release radar. It's also worth noting that if you do a separate release for a remix of your song, it is not guaranteed release radar placement. Only original songs uploaded for the first time are guaranteed. Spotif <clears throat> Spotify marquee campaigns. Spotify marquee campaigns. 
Spotify Marquee allows artists to create a full screen sponsored recommendation for new releases. The Marquee will display in the app with a prompt to listen to the new album release. A Marquee can be scheduled up to 18 days after a song has been released. At time of writing, Marquee is not available in all countries and there are some minimum requirements that have to be met to be eligible. Artists must have more than 15,000 streams over the last 28 days in the United States. Marquee can only be created for new releases. If promoting an album, 50% or more of the songs must be new and never previously released. The artist's distributor must have enabled Marquee. To see if a marquee can be created, log in to Spotify for Artists. Campaigns will be visible along the top menu. Please note that marquee is a paid option for artists that want to promote their music directly within the Spotify app. Spotify for Artists. Spotify for Artists. Spotify for Artists. Stats. Spotify for Artists has a great amount of detail for Okay, I'll do it one more time. Spotify for Artists stats. Spotify for Artists has a great amount of detail for where the streams and listeners for Spotify for Artists has a great amount of detail for where the streams and listeners from your music come from. You can see the location of those listeners, which playlists the streams come from, and if people are listening directly from your artist profile. While it can be addictive to open the app and check your stats several times a day, keep in mind that these numbers only update once every 24 hours. The only exception here is in the Spotify for Artists app. Immediately after a new song is released, the live stream count shows for the first seven days and updates every two seconds to show the total number of streams. Bonus tip, some artists have found a way to incorporate this count into a live stream on social media. It's a fun way to get your audience excited by sharing updates with them. Spotify Fan Engagement, contributed by Mark Tavern. Improving your marketing means understanding each DSP's ecosystem and implementing strategies and tactics designed for how the platform works. With Spotify, this means it's better understanding its AI, specifically its algorithmic playlisting and recommendations and tailoring your marketing to With Spotify, this means better understanding its AI, Specifically, it's algorithmic playlisting and recommendations and tailoring your marketing to put the platform to work for you. Marketers often talk about push and pull. These are general terms that describe how marketing messages are sent and received. When a brand uses push marketing, they put their message directly in front of consumers through advertising or other promotions. Push marketing is active. Conversely, Pull marketing is passive, with marketers trying to draw customers to them organically. As an artist, understanding and implementing both strategies is key. While there are humans making decisions about Spotify's platform, the AI is paying attention to everything happening on it as well. Knowing this means being able to take advantage of Spotify in ways that help both Knowing this means being able to take advantage. Well, <clears throat> knowing this means being able to take advantage of Spotify in ways that help both push and pull tactics. Doing so allows you to implement an integrated plan. Push marketing drives followers to your music and engages Spotify's algorithmic playlisting. This in turn generates pull marketing on your behalf via Spotify's recommendations. Lots of effort goes into trying to get onto third-party and editorial playlists, and both are important for generating attention. However, creating your own inbound traffic is important too. This is the push part of your strategy. 
Run campaigns that share links customized for individual services from each of your social platforms. This increases the focus on your music. If you can get enough fans to click through, there will be a spike in traffic when multiple users listen simultaneously. Driving this off-platform traffic to Spotify will be detected, and if you make the spike big enough, the chance your music gets added to an algorithmic playlist increases. This highlights the importance of release day messaging. Release day is the best moment to focus attention on your music. Sharing a link is one way, and the right call to action will get followers to click through and listen. There are other methods too, including making your own playlist that includes a focus track and then sharing the playlist link, running a pre-save campaign, using Spotify's artist pick, and encouraging influencers to point their followers to your music. Be creative here. These methods all demonstrate push marketing, putting links to your music directly in front of your fans. These are effective tactics, not just on their own, but in how they can get Spotify actively working for you through algorithmic playlisting. Driving traffic that triggers Spotify's algorithmic playlists should be half of your plan. The other half is making its recommendation engine work for you. One of the things I tell both clients and students about marketing is that they need to identify their audience. Targeting makes for more efficient marketing as identifying the people. Targeting makes for more efficient marketing as identifying the people who are interested makes it easier and cheaper to reach them. Spotify does this automatically. Each user has a Discover Weekly playlist tailored to their individual listening habits. There are recommendations on user homepages and via the fans also like section on artist pages. Introducing new music to users is an important feature. It draws users to the platform and keeps them engaged. Use this information as part of your own audience targeting. If Spotify identifies your music as similar to another artist, then there's a good chance that artist's listeners will be interested in your music as well. Once you can generate the kind of traffic that Spotify notices, your music will begin to appear in algorithmic playlists generated for users who have listened to similar artists. This is Spotify's recommendation AI working. This is Spotify's recommendation AI working and where your pool marketing comes in. Be ready for these potential fans. Their initial point of contact is through your profile so make sure it's optimized. Take an inventory. Are the photos and bio on Spotify up to date and on brand? Are you utilizing social badges so followers who hear your music on Spotify for the first time can click through and follow you off platform? Are you utilizing the artist pick as a way to get mailing list signups or direct potential fans to other sites you control? Are you displaying tour dates and selling merch? If your push marketing is working, ensure your pull marketing is too. Provide as many ways for new listeners to engage with you on platform as possible, and then ensure they are drawn to your own sites. Remember, pull marketing isn't force. Create the conditions by which your target audience can act and find you. Having a fully optimized, up-to-date profile accomplishes this. It's easy to think of DSPs as a goal, that your marketing ends with them. In actuality, DSPs are also a means to your marketing, enabling you to utilize your... In actuality, DSPs are also a means to your marketing, enabling you to utilize their individual features as part of your efforts. By fully understanding how a platform works, you can better take advantage of it. By fully understanding how a platform works, you can take better advantage of it, turning it into an opportunity. Spotify's AI can be a part of this, a place not just to send existing fans to listen, but one where you can target new fans and get them listening as well. Done right, these can be intertwined, creating an endless feedback in which Spotify's AI becomes a key element in your own marketing. Find out more about Mark at Mark Tavern. 
www.ghostbusters.com. <laughs> it's a lot of talking. That's a, yeah, you know what, I'll do it. I'll, I'm just going to drink some something other than, other than water as well, maybe some Powerade. <laughs> cool. Cool. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. <laughs> um, yeah, totally. Cool. Yeah, I'll just stand up and have a bit of a stretch then. Awesome. I'm something a little other than coffee myself. <laughs> yeah, do it. <laughs>
Is there anything I can do to make it easier for you when I need to? Or, or is it? No, it's, it's fun. It's, 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 okay. it's a very. It's been just as long as I'm alive. So. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a treat, sir. You treat me right. <laughs> oh, yeah. I need to tell my wife that. Too. She says I need to get a little person out of my system. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it, it's been a good week. So I'm, I'm happy with how things are going. How are how things going over there? Everything in here? No, it's it's just chilling here. I mean, I it, it felt like the first ten minutes was slow, and then all of a sudden I'm just gone. Yeah, you're finding your groove, you know. To be honest, the part I'm struggling with is when I'm reading something someone else contributed, because all of a sudden it's like, okay, I think it's pretty simple. I don't use these big words, and yeah. I'm like, but the way people build yeah. things is pretty easy to learn. Yeah. So I'm like, I think I know where this is going. I can't remember the entire book, <laughs> and then I read it and I then you just backtrack and no, it's say that again. It's, so. it's all good. It's been it's been going quick so far. So um, yeah, I've, I've had the uh, I've I've had the house record here for a while uh, on the book I worked on. Yeah, probably a year or two ago now. Um, are, are you familiar with Pro Tools at all? Yeah. Okay. So. You can have up to 999 markers in Pro Tools. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think the house record is still at like 2300. Yeah. And there's a there's a narrator here. Yeah. For the most part, overcome I think some some speech impediments earlier okay. in, in your life, but it's just every single line had something that needed to be yeah. touched on. And it's just like okay. Couple lift mats every now and then, and that's about it. You know, I pick up here or there. So this is this really is what I have. Cool. Yeah, I mean, one thing I'm aware of is that my pH is. Um, uh -huh. I, my whole life, I've never been able to nail that down. So I, it's funny because sometimes people will pick up on it and go, "Hey, like, is that like S R E E or P H I E?" I don't know why. There, there have been a couple of spots, but usually I I give you know regional accents a pass. I'll take it. Um, yeah. Just because, like, I, it, it's it's a fine line between, you know, having something be, like, Silicon Valley correct, you yeah. know, according to, you know, whatever PC algorithm I'm aligning to. Um, but I, I, I try not to change the, the character of whoever I'm speaking to. Yeah. You know, that, that, um, so, so there are a couple of spots for the editor that's like, hey, don't, don't think that about this. <laughs> yeah. Just replace it. Like it's you know, a couple of the books I've worked on have had one of them had a a real thick Texas accent or you know, one had a a Missoula <laughs> accent or something like that. So um it, it, especially for editors who kind of think about what it says on the page, some of them still don't. Yeah. <laughs> um but it's 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 gonna give to my ears. There, anytime, you know, something that as a listener it would have distracted me, I chop it out. Yeah. So I'm like, this line is good. Do you feel this? Okay. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> good. We are back. I was gonna say I don't sound as oh there we go I sound way cooler <laughs> all good <clears throat> sorry are we all set
Okay, cool. I don't want to start talking and... <clears throat> Spotify collaborative playlists. In the Spotify app on your phone, you can create a collaborative playlist. In the Spotify app on your phone, you can create a collaborative playlist and add users as collaborators. This is safer than sharing a link as anyone who has the link will be able to access and add and remove songs on your playlist. To set these up on your phone or tablet, tap on your library. Go to playlists and select the one you want to collaborate on. Keep in mind you can only do this for a playlist you've already created. Tap the add user button in the header to make the playlist collaborative. Start inviting others to add songs and podcast episodes on social media, messaging apps, or simply by copying and pasting the link. Spotify deleted playlists recovery. If you have deleted a playlist in Spotify, you have 90 days to retrieve it. Here's how. Log in to spotify.com slash account. Click recover playlists in the menu on the left. Click restore. Open Spotify and you will find the restored playlist at the bottom of your playlist collection. Bonus tip. So far, recovering a recently deleted playlist may also recover all followers of that playlist. This is extremely valuable for accidental deletions and saves you from starting all the way back at zero. Spotify fans also like Setchin. If you visit an artist profile on Spotify and look at the fans also like tab, you may be wondering how these related artists are being generated. According to Spotify, the fans also like tab on your artist profile is determined by algorithms using a combination of your fans listening habits, music discussions and trends happening around the internet. According to Spotify, the fans also like tab on your artist profile is determined by algorithms using a combination of your fans listening habits, music discussions and trends happening around the internet. If you've recently had your music added to a Spotify If you've recently had your music added to a Spotify Oh my gosh. One more time. If you've recently had your music added to Spotify or perhaps you had to request a separation of your music from an artist with the same name, there is a good chance your fans also like artists could be way off. For instance, I worked with a house music producer who shares a name with a children's singer. For obvious reasons, he swiftly wanted to For obvious reasons, he swiftly wanted to correct his related artists. To correct the related artists, Thomas Garcia signed up for an account with last.fm. The next step was logging into last.fm, going to settings, then applications and opting to connect for Spotify Scrubbling and Spotify Playback. Last.fm will keep track of your listening history within Spotify and will automatically start to piece together other users' listening history. My suggestion is to create a new playlist, say 20 or 30 songs long, including music from both the artist and similar artists you'd like to be related with. Next. Share this with friends or fans and ask them to play it through once or twice. Remember, only once or twice, no cheating the system unless you want to see your music removed from Spotify. Just make sure your listeners log into their last.fm account and connect to Spotify first. If all goes well, as it did in my experiment, within a few weeks, you may see your related artists start to change and hopefully be more relevant to your music. Spotify's Personalized Playlists, contributed by Chris Robley. Don't ignore the power of personalized playlists. It's easy to get distracted by the big official editorial lists that have thousands or millions of followers. It's even easier to get distracted. 
it's even easier to get discouraged if you don't end up on one of them. Spotify's system is constantly working in the background to deliver your music to the right listeners, one listener at a time. That might not feel like a big win or a huge headline, but it does help you make a connection. It helps you make fans one person at a time. For my last single, something like 60% of my overall streams were driven by algorithmic activity. For the first 28 days, when Release Radar was delivering the bulk of that interaction, I was getting great engagements too. Not quantity, but quality. Do I wish that I had a huge amount of streams? Of course, but it's rare to get the former without the latter. Do that again. Do I wish I had a huge quantity of streams? Of course, but it's rare to get the former without the latter. And at least the people who did hear the song were enjoying it. At the end of the day, thanks to Spotify's recommendation engine, that's kind of a success. At the end of the day, thanks to Spotify's recommendation engine, that's a kind of success. Find out more about Chris at chrisrobley.com. Spotify playlist cleanup. Take a look at your playlists. There's a good chance some of them are in need of a little TLC. Here are some good tools I use to make sure my playlists are always in good order. Removing duplicate songs. Spotify Dedupe, D-E-D-U-P, is a nifty website that removes duplicated songs from your playlists and saves songs. You can find this by doing a quick Google search for Spotify D-E-D-U-P. Removing unavailable tracks. Some songs have since been removed from Spotify or are only available in certain countries. To some users, they will appear greyed out and unplayable. Here's how to find and remove them. On the desktop app, go into settings and select show unavailable songs in playlists. Any Spotify user can turn this option on and see songs in the playlist that are not available in their territory or have since been removed from Spotify, but not yet removed from your playlist. It's a good opportunity to clean up your playlist. Spotify genre list. Every noise at once can be found at everynoise.com. It is a deep dive into music genres, songs by city, and so much more. I use this to discover new genres. Emo trap or pirate metal, anyone? Here's the explanation directly from their website. Every Noise at Once is an ongoing attempt at an algorithmically generated, readability adjusted scatter plot of the musical genre space based on data tracked and analyzed for 5,521 genres by Spotify. Yep, you heard that correctly. 5,521 genres at time of writing. Every Noise was created by Glenn McDonald. Glenn is Spotify's genre taxonomist and shares some mind-blowing data through this website and at Every Noise on Twitter. Spotify Search Shortcuts. Spotify Search is commonly used for finding songs, artists, lyrics, and playlists, but there is so much more you can do. These search keywords are particularly useful when finding music from a specific record label, genre, release, or within a specific year or range of years. All of the keywords mentioned are to be entered into the Spotify search bar, and you would type in the text with no spaces between them. To search by a record label name, you would type label, colon, record label name. If the record label is multiple words, for example, Tommy Boy, you would add a plus between each word. Your search string would then be label, colon, Tommy plus Boy, once again with no spaces between them. The same can be applied to search by genre. You can type genre, colon, the genre's name. 
And the same can be also achieved for search by touching the same. And the same can also be achieved searching by year. You would type year colon the year number. If you would like to search in a year range, you would type year colon the first year hyphen the second year. For example, year colon 2012 hyphen 2018. You can use this to create a best of 1990s playlist or even a playlist dedicated to your favorite record label and or genre. By using these keywords, you will be able to discover or rediscover many songs for your playlists. In the search results, you can then sort by artist name or song title. This will help with the sorting process as you will see multiple releases featuring the same song. You don't want to add multiple versions of your song into your playlist. Bonus tip. It's much easier to click and drag these into your playlist as you discover them. Alternatively, you can right click on the song and then choose the playlist you would like to add it to. Spotify listener apps. There's lots of quirky, fun and useful apps that have been created for Spotify listeners. Here's a few worth checking out. Stations by Spotify, stations.spotify.com, an endless radio stream powered by Spotify. Spotify for pets, pets.byspotify.com, get your pet playlist, music for our best friends. Soundtrack your workout, soundtrackyourworkout.byspotify.com uses your listening habits and inputs to create the perfect mix for your workout. Soundtrack your ride, soundtrackyourride.byspotify.com allows you to sync up, customize, and get the perfect playlist for your ride. Spotify Duo, the ultimate love experience. Duo love songs, dot by spotify dot com create a personalized love playlist for your relationship spotify kids explore the kids app dot by spotify dot com sample songs from the kids app via your favorite emojis rap caviar day one club day one club dot by spotify dot com Prove which rappers you've been listening to the longest on Spotify. Spotify High Intensity Interval Training. Pumped.byspotify.com Create a personalized high intensity interval workout and exercise. Create a personalized high intensity interval training workout and exercise with the music you love. Spotify Fan Study, Spotify Fan Study, fanstudy.byspotify.com, a super detailed study into fan behavior and how it translates into Spotify. The first study showed how many fans come to Spotify from links shared on LinkedIn, Discord, and other platforms. Music's Match. Music's Match is not a music streaming platform per se. They do deliver lyrics to multiple platforms. Music's Match is not a music streaming platform per se, but they do deliver lyrics to multiple platforms. They even translate lyrics into other languages and can synchronize them in time with the music. I've mentioned them previously, so if you haven't signed up, now is the time. Anyone can contribute lyrics which are then verified and made available in a number of apps. These include Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, Shazam, Instagram, and even Google search results. Artists can also get verified accounts by signing up at musicsmatch.com. Deezer Backstage. Deezer is available in over 180 countries 
and is one of the first major DSPs in many of these countries. This means that in many of these countries, such as France, there are more Deezer subscribers than Spotify or Apple. Deezer Backstage launched mid-2020 and is available to artists, managers and labels at backstage.deezer.com. If your request doesn't get a response after a few weeks, you can politely escalate with at Deezer help on Twitter. I waited three weeks before tweeting and asked them to review my request. Please note that they will ask for the artist name, who requested access, and the email address entered on the form. I did this and within two days I had access for multiple artists. Deezer artist, Deezer artist Profile Highlight Deezer allows you to highlight a track, album, or playlist on your artist page. This is similar to the artist pick option in Spotify. Go to the artist edition page in Deezer Backstage. Under the highlights section, use the search function to find the content, track, album, or playlist that you want to highlight. Select the country where you want the highlighted content to be visible. To display it to your entire fan base, select Worldwide. Choose how long you want the content to be highlighted on your page. Yep. Select the country where you want the highlighted content to be visible. To display it to your entire fan base, select Worldwide. Choose how long you want the content to be highlighted on your page. Deezer Artist Playlists. You can feature up to two playlists on your Deezer Artist profile. To do this, you will first need to create two playlists as a user in Deezer. In other words, logged into the app as a listener. You can update these playlists with new music anytime. Once you have created your playlists, follow these steps. Email support at Deezer.com with the subject Artist Profile Update artist name. Include two links to playlists that you have created. These will be added to your artist profile as artist playlists. Deezer also requires the URL of your artist profile and your Deezer username in the email. Deezer Web Widget. Deezer's embeddable web widget is available worldwide. Even if Deezer isn't available in your country, you can still create a widget. You can embed an album, playlist, track, artist, podcast, or podcast episode. The widget can be included on artist websites, in articles, blogs, and posts. You can create a widget at widget.deezer.com, or if you use Deezer on the web, click the Share menu. Bonus tip, create a dedicated landing page for each streaming platform on your website. This will allow you to include direct links to your music and playlists on that specific DSP. Amazon Music for Artists. Amazon Music is fast becoming a major player in the music streaming world. Artists can get access Artists can get access to their profiles, some helpful tools for selling merch, and even integrations with Twitch. Amazon Music for Artists launched in 2020 and is available on the web at artists.amazon.com and as a mobile app for iOS and Android devices. You will need an Amazon account to be able to sign in and claim your profile. Creating an Amazon account is free and can be used to log into multiple Amazon products, including Twitch. Once logged in, you can request access on the main screen. You'll be greeted with a form where you should add as much information as you can to prove that you are the artist or should have access to that artist, e.g. you are a manager, label, or distributor for that artist. To get expedited access, you can log in with your distributor credentials. If you distribute your music to Amazon Music, 
using CD Baby, DistroKid, or TuneCore, this is the quickest known way to get access and skip any waiting periods while someone at Amazon verifies your request. <clears throat> Amazon Music Artist Profile. You can upload a profile photo and cover photo in Amazon Music for Artists. This can be done by going into the profile and tool screen at out This can be done by going to the profile and tools screen at artists.amazon.com or clicking on the person icon in the app on your phone. These images will need to meet certain guidelines which you can see in the app to make sure that your images will be accepted. There is currently no known way to add a biography to an artist profile on Amazon Music. Amazon Music and Twitch linking. You can link your Twitch account to your Amazon Music artist profile. This allows users of Amazon Music to view your Twitch live streams directly. This allows users of Amazon Music to view your Twitch live streams directly in the Twitch or Amazon Music app on your artist profile. It also notifies all of your followers when you go live. To set this up, log into the Amazon Music for Artists app and click the profile icon. Bottom right corner in the mobile app is where you can find that. Or click profile and tools on Amazon Music for Artists website. To set this up, log into the Amazon Music for Artists app and click on the profile icon located in the bottom right corner in the mobile app. Or click profile and tools on the Amazon Music for Artists website. From here, you can connect your Twitch channel. Artists can also work their way up to become Twitch affiliates, which allows fans to subscribe to their channel and send tips, also known as bits. Twitch Prime users also get a monthly subscription included, and they can use that to subscribe to any Twitch channel and support the artist directly. Amazon Music Merch. Artists can now create their own merchandise page on Amazon and link it to their Amazon Music Artist page. Check out these examples from Taylor Swift, Mary J. Blige, and ACDC. Amazon.com slash ACDC. Amazon.com slash Mary J. Blige. Amazon.com slash Taylor Swift. The latest information, request forms, and integrations can be found at artists.amazonmusic.com slash merch. Amazon Music Editorial Playlist Pitching. Amazon Music allows artists to pitch an upcoming release directly within the Amazon Music for Artists app. This will this also allows you to submit a song that was released within the last two weeks. Take the time to as much detail as possible when filling out the submission forms because you are giving your music... Take the time to add as much detail as possible when filling out the submission forms because you are giving your music opportunities beyond just editorial playlist ads. The team at Amazon hinted that this could also lead to radio programming and other features within Amazon Music. Don't have a subscription to Amazon Music? You can go to music.amazon.com in most web browsers without the need to sign in. You can search the music library and copy share links to tracks, albums, artists, podcasts, and music videos. Amazon Music Social Media Tags Tag the relevant Amazon accounts in each post on social media. Amazon Music is one of the newer DSPs, so they tend to be more responsive on social media. Tag these accounts in your posts and they may respond. On Facebook, tag Amazon Music. On Twitter, tag Amazon Music. There is also different variations of this for other countries, including the UK, 
Japan, Mexico, and Indonesia. On Instagram, tag Amazon Music. They also have individual accounts for other countries as well. Amazon Music has also started creating social media accounts for specific genres. If you create hip hop, R&B, or German do trap, you should also tag these handles in your posts. Genre handles, at rotation for hip hop and R&B, and I don't know how to say that. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to reword this section. Yep. Amazon Music has also started creating social media accounts for specific genres. One example, if you create hip hop or R&B, you could tag the handle at rotation. Amazon Music suggests tagging at Amazon Music instead of using hashtag Amazon Music. This is clearly mentioned in their online documentation. They also say that by tagging them in your posts, it makes it, quote, easy for us to find, engage, and share your posts to our followers, end quote. Amazon Music using Alexa. Have your followers request you directly from their Alexa device. The Amazon Music team plays the Amazon Music team pays close attention to the number of requests for an artist through Alexa. Requests can be made to Alexa using artist name, album name, song title, or by singing part of the song lyrics. Artists can also see how many people have requested their music by song, album, artist, or by singing or speaking part of the lyrics. This can be found in Amazon Music for Artists. Bonus tip. Add your song lyrics to Amazon through Lyric Find or Music's Match, as fans may not know your song title but can speak or sing part of the lyrics to Alexa. Get your fans to follow you on their Alexa device to receive notifications when you release new music. Fans can simply say, Alexa, follow artist name on Amazon Music. If you have an artist name that is unique to pronounce, you can teach your fans how to pronounce the name correctly in video posts on social media. You can also speak directly with your label or distributor and inform them of the correct You can also speak directly with your label or distributor and inform them of the correct pronunciation of your artist name and they can deliver that information to Amazon for you. Bonus tip. With multiple DSPs supporting voice you can also make requests to Alexa to follow other services. For example, Alexa, follow artist name on Spotify. As long as you have linked that DSP on your Alexa-enabled device, you can make this request. Angami for artists. Angami launched in 2012 as the first legal streaming platform and digital distribution company in the Middle East. Angami allows the uploading of songs, albums, podcasts, and music videos directly to its platform, bypassing a distributor. It's worth mentioning that Angami is available in a number of countries worldwide, but does not currently have agreements for all content to be available in all countries. In other words, most music is available on Angami for listeners in the Middle East, but may not show on Angami in the United States. One way to see if your music is on Angami is to open an incognito web browser window and search for artist name, song title, Angami. Your song may show up in the search results and you can grab the URL for the artist, song, or album. Angami Artist Profile. Once you have access and are signed into your dashboard account, click on My Artist Profile. On this page, you can do the following. Upload an artist profile image or choose to use the picture from the artist profile on Facebook. Update the artist, update the artist name, edit the music language. 
add a biography, add links to Facebook and Twitter. Click update profile when done. These changes are not instant and GAMI staff will review them and send an email with approval or rejection, usually within a few days. Angami Direct Music Uploads As mentioned, Angami has a rare offering which allows artists to upload music directly. This means you can bypass a distributor. If you previously distributed music to Angami, you can simply uncheck Angami as a store for future releases with your distributor. Your distributor will then handle Your distributor will then continue to handle all other stores while you are responsible for uploading your music to Angami. Your distributor will then continue to handle all other stores while you are responsible for uploading your music to Angami. Uploading your music to Angami allows detailed revenue-based data with financial reports, streams by song, and streams by country. The upload form is relatively straightforward. Even better, you can also upload songs, albums, podcasts, DJ mixes, and compilations through this form. You can also upload videos using either a video file from your computer. You can also upload videos using either a video file from your computer or a YouTube link. These will be connected to an existing song you previously uploaded to allow fans to opt for watching the music video and accompanying visuals as an alternative to streaming just the audio. You can also upload videos using either a video file from your computer or a YouTube link. These will be connected to an existing song you have previously uploaded and allows fans to opt for watching the music video with accompanying visuals as an alternative to streaming just the audio. Angami Editorial Playlist Pitching The Angami for Artists app The Angami for Artists mobile app now shows an exciting option that is coming soon for direct playlist pitching. While there is no more detail yet, it's a great reason for artists to sign up and claim access now so they can be first in line as soon as this feature becomes available. Keep in mind that when Spotify first launched their editorial submission tool, roughly one in every seven tracks was added to an editorial playlist as a result. It's definitely worth signing up and being one of the first for when this is available. Cobuzz. Cobuzz is geared towards audiophiles, largely due to their integration with high-end audio equipment. Their curation is completely human and it shows. The playlists are shorter, heavily curated, and they are not afraid to showcase music from less established artists. Artist bios are delivered to Cobuzz from TiVo. Yep, the same company that has pioneered the Magic TV recording box. TiVo's database is also shared at allmusic.com for biographical information. TiVo's database is also shared at allmusic.com for biographical information. To include your bio on Cobuzz, send an email to TiVo at content.music at TiVo.com. Be warned, it can take a few weeks for this data to appear on allmusic.com and then on Cobuzz. Album reviews are written in-house by the Cobuzz team. There is no official process for submitting music for consideration for review at this time. You can change your artist bio. You can change your artist photo by reaching out through the customer service po oh my gosh. You can change your artist photo by reaching out through the customer service portal on cobuzz.com. Genius. Genius is a community of music lovers and artists sharing their knowledge and stories behind the music. Genius also delivers lyrics and extra information to various streaming services. You can get verified at genius.com. 
Once verified, you will be able to share accurate lyrics, hidden meanings and stories behind songs and song lyrics, and even reach out to fans on there that are already annotating your music on the website. Napster. Napster only allows you to upload one image at this time. To do this, fill out the form located in the Napster Help Center on their website. Be sure to include the URL to your artist page so they know where to add this image. The dimensions for the image must be 1500 by 1000 and it must be a JPEG file. The live chat on Napster's website is also quite helpful. Tidal. Tidal doesn't currently provide any artist tools or apps. That being said, social media that being said, social media links, bios, and photos can be added to an artist's profile by sending an email. In fact, by going to an artist's profile such as Jay-Z, you can see an example of how much additional information can be added. There are links to his social media, an updated bio, and photos. Send an email to artistsupport at title.com with two photos links to your social media, a short biography, and the URL to your artist profile on Tidal. Tidal is similar to other DSP... Tidal is similar to other DSPs in that you can view an artist page without having an account or being logged in. In the screen... I'm gonna ax that part, I'll, I'll just re-record. Title is similar to other DSPs. Title is similar to other DSPs in that you can view an artist page without having an account or even being logged in. One more. Title is similar to other DSPs in that you can view an artist page without having an account or being logged in. Apple Music. Apple Music launched in 2015 and is available in over 100 countries worldwide. If you don't have an Apple device or Apple ID, you can still see what is offered on Apple Music by going to music.apple.com on your computer. Prior to 2020, users could do this by navigating to beta.music.apple.com, which is still functioning as well if you're curious. You can even browse through the music selection on Apple Music without signing in. This allows you to make sure your music is available and see what your artist profile looks like without having to pay for a subscription. You can also see if your song has been featured on a playlist, chart, or on one of the homepage screens. Of course, you still need a subscription to fully stream any music. You can easily change the country to see the homepage in various countries as programming varies by country. This is available at the bottom of the screen. Apple Music for Artists Artists, labels and managers can sign up to Apple Music for Artists at artists.apple.com and request access to one or more artists. Alternatively, Access can also be requested in the Apple Music for Artists app, currently available only on Apple iOS devices. Requests can be fast-tracked for independent artists through their distributor. Currently, the following distributors have a way to expedite access to Apple Music for Artists. CD Baby, DistroKid, 1RPM, TuneCore, and United Masters. Apple Music also includes Shazam Insights. F Fun fact, anytime someone with an Apple device says, hey Siri, what song is this? The answer is delivered from Shazam and counts as a Shazam, even if you don't have the Shazam app installed.
Apple Music Artist data. Once you have access, let's walk through the features in Apple Music for Artists. Overview. The Overview panel is a quick summary of plays, average daily listeners, iTunes song purchases, and Shazams. You can choose to see stats going as far back as the life you can choose to see stat. You can choose to see stats going as far back as the lifetime of the artist on the platform, or as recent as the past week. Insights. The insights section provides a quick glance at specific milestones, letting you know where your music is taking off around the world. This tells you about editorial playlist ads, Shazam milestones, and stream milestones. Trends. The trends section allows you to customize. The trends section allows you to customize a graph to give you. Trends. The trends section allows you to customize a graph to give a visual representation of the numbers for your artist. You can use the drop down menus to filter your stream counts by individual songs, playlists locations, ages, genders, and more. Places. The data in this section allows you to dive deeper into how many plays, listeners, and shazams your music is getting in specific countries or regions. This can be extremely valuable for routing a tour or targeting social media ads towards fans in a specific city. Your music. The Your Music tab shows a summary of plays, average daily listeners, Shazams, and iTunes purchases. Downloading your data. Apple Music for Artists allows you to download some of this data in CSV, also known as Comma Separated Values format. This allows you to open the file when you prefer Yes, we did. Thank you. I'm going to do your music and uh, just to let you know, I am skipping the word radio spins because they've since removed that. So cool. Okay. <clears throat> your music. The your music tab shows a summary of plays, average daily listeners, Shazams and iTunes purchases. If you have been added to a playlist, you can also see the number of songs added to that playlist and the number of plays received through that playlist. <clears throat> Downloading your data. Apple Music for Artists allows you to download some of this data in CSV, also known as Comma Separated Values format. This allows you to open the file in your preferred spreadsheet program. Could be Microsoft Excel, Apple Numbers, or Google Sheets. To download data, click on the text See All. On the next screen, click on the square icon with the down arrow. This will automatically launch the download of the CSV file for you. Updating your artist profile picture. You can change your artist profile picture by clicking the Manage tab, then clicking Upload Image. Apple is very particular about the artist images. The artist's face Apple is very particular about artist images. The artist's face must be visible and you can't upload text or a logo for the artwork. In this example, Apple is very particular about artist images. The artist's face must be visible and you can't upload text or a logo in the artwork. Apple Music Marketing Tools. If you are looking for unique ways to share music, such as a scannable QR code or embeddable music player, check out this suite of marketing tools from Apple Music. If you happen to also be an affiliate with Apple, you can also include your affiliate code when sharing links to Apple Music as well and make a little extra money from sharing music. Pretty cool, right?
the following tools we're about to cover can all be found by searching for Apple Music marketing tools. Apple Music QR codes. QR codes are an interactive and effective way to drive more people to a specific website, product, or in this case, music. Print these on clothing, bumper stickers, or even project them onto screens. Try this out. Apple Music Twitter Audio Card. Twitter audio cards are a 30 second preview of a Twitter audio cards are a 30 second preview of a song that can be shared within a tweet. They use the album cover and allow anyone to listen to a 30 second clip of the song without leaving Twitter. Apple Music subscribers can also click the link to hear the song in full. Another nice bonus here is that Apple affiliates can include an affiliate code when generating these previews and can make some money from any subscriptions that occur as a result. Apple Music Artist Playlists Creating playlists as an artist on Apple Music takes a few steps, but it's well worth the extra steps to give you an edge over the competition. You will need admin access to the artist in Apple Music for Artists, an Apple Music subscription, and the Apple Music app installed on your phone. Currently, this can only be done via the mobile app. Tap the library icon. Tap edit. Check the option next to admin. Tap done. Tap on admin. Tap the artist name. Then tap new playlist. While the playlists created will not currently show in search results or on artist profiles, the links can be shared on social media. Your fans can then save your playlists to their own library and the playlist curator name. Your fans can then save your playlists to their own library and the playlist curator name will link listeners directly to your artist profile. A video walkthrough of this can be found at work hard playlisthard.com Apple Music Lyrics Add lyrics to your music to allow fans to find your song by search or by speaking part of the lyrics. This is also helpful for potential new fans who may only remember part of the lyrics to one of your songs. Some distributors will offer a way to push lyrics to Apple Music and other streaming platforms. Alternatively, you can send the lyrics directly to the Apple Music team via their contact form on artists.apple.com. There should be an option for submitting your lyrics. Beatport artist and label profiles. Beatport started as an online music store to purchase extended mixes of music for DJs. In 2019, Beatport Link launched and allowed DJs to stream any song from Beatport to connected DJ equipment. Beatport allows artists to upload a professional headshot to their artist profile. The artwork must be at least 590 by 404 pixels and a JPEG image. You can find this form by doing a quick search for Beatport Artist Image Update. If you are a DJ, in addition to being a producer, you can create your own charts on Beatport at beatport.com slash DJ slash charts slash new. You can then add these charts to your artist profile. If you are a record label owner, you can also have your label profile updated. Your image must be 500 by 500 pixels and you can input your image must be 500 by 500 pixels and you can include a bio as well. The label update form can be found by searching for Beatport label update form. Bonus tip. <clears throat> Bonus tip. Most independent music distributors have the ability to distribute music to Beatport, but may only do so upon request. This is because not every genre of music is accepted on Beatport. 
This is because not every genre of this is because not every genre of music is accepted or available on Beatport. If you make some form of electronic music or hip hop, you should definitely reach out to your distributor to see if they can also add your music to Beatport. <clears throat> Beatport Hype. Running your own label? Beatport Hype is an official Beatport promotional platform with a suite of features to get your music in front of more listeners. It is, however, only available to selected label partners. The monthly cost is less than a Netflix subscription. <clears throat> The monthly cost is less than a Netflix subscription and Beatport claims that on average, labels signed up to Beatport Hype have seen an increase of more than 70% in track sales. This is owned and operated by Beatport themselves with 35 million unique visitors per year and 25,000 tracks added every week. It's a great opportunity to invest in some extra promotion to get your music heard. The website is Hype. Dot beat. The website is hype.beatport.com. Submitting your music through this platform also allows your music to be eligible for dedicated hype charts, including the Hype Top 10, which features on the Beatport homepage. I'm just going to grab a fresh drink from my bag. Oof. Okay, I, I, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> this is a lot of talking. Nice. Yeah, it's funny. I get to, I get to certain pages and I see the screenshots and I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to keep pushing. <clears throat> Let's do it. Pandora Artist Marketing Platform. Pandora is a music streaming platform. Pandora is a music streaming platform with close to 60 million monthly listeners in the United States. Artists from anywhere in the world can get access to some awesome tools to reach and grow their audience on Pandora. Currently, Pandora is only available to listeners in America, but there's nothing stopping artists from all over the world having a presence on the platform. Pandora provides a number of extremely useful tools for artists to promote their music and connect with their fans. These are available through their artist marketing platform, also known as AMP, which is located at amp.pandora.com. Pandora Submission Tool. Distributing your music to Pandora is only half the work. Distributing your music to Pandora is only half of the work. Pandora is a human curated collection of music. To make your music available on all of Pandora's services, you need to fill out a brief form. 
Pandora does have an independent artist submission tool that allows you to Pandora does have an independent artist submission tool that allows your music to be reviewed and considered by Pandora for programming inclusion on their radio stations. To use this, you will first need an AMP account. Independent artists can use a distributor such as CD Baby or DistroKid to get their music on Pandora. Once music has been distributed, artists can submit their music at amp.pandora.com slash submit. You can find a release to submit using its UPC or searching by a song name. If you are submitting an album, choose one favorite track to put forward for consideration. You will then select a genre and write a description of 4,000 characters or less. There is currently no option to tag moods or keywords with the song submission. Once a submission is approved, it will be analyzed in the Pandora Music Genome Project and made available on all Pandora programs. Platforms, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna redo that one. Cool, good catch. Once a submission is approved, it will be analyzed in the Music Genome Project and made available on all Pandora platforms. Pandora Featured Tracks. Pandora allows you to feature up to six tracks per year. Featured tracks will gain an increase in spin. Featured tracks will gain an increase in spins across Pandora radio stations in an effort to gain audience feedback. Listeners can vote with a thumbs up or down when they listen to your featured track. As a bonus, you can do this for any track that was released within the last 12 months. The song will need to have at least 10 spins in the last 7 days to be eligible. Bonus tip, those 10 spins can come from the same person. Just between us though, of course. The feature selection form is very short and there is no review process. The feature selection form is very short and there is no review process. The song will simply be featured on the date range you specify. One clever use I've seen of this feature is selecting a holiday song that came out 11 months ago as the feature to lead up to the holiday season in the current year. This way you can potentially give another song This way you can potentially give a song another chance at being heard, especially if it revolves around a specific time of the year, like a holiday. Pandora Stories. Pandora Stories are artist curated playlists and mixtapes, also known as stations. These are comprised of music and comedy tracks from Pandora's library. Anyone can create these, not just artists. You can even record your own voice tracks that can be attached to specific songs or set to play between tracks in sequential order. This is a great opportunity to set This is a great opportunity to share some behind the scenes stories, fan messages or promotional reminders about your music. You can request access to create You can request access to create stories by going to the AMP playbook which can be found at ampplaybook.com. Pandora Artist Audio Messages. Pandora Artist Audio Messages. Artist audio messages are short 15 second notes to your fans. They can be used to promote releases, tour dates, or say thank you in... Artist audio messages are short 15 second notes to your fans. They can be used to promote releases, tour dates, or say thank you at the intro or outro of a song. These messages also show a photo and call to action. This can be as simple as tap here to buy tickets in the text or 
Tap the link on your screen to listen now. Insert it into the audio. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, so um, for that, I guess if I went artist audio messages or AAMs, okay, I'll do that. <clears throat> Good call. I'll, I'll redo that now. <clears throat> Pandora Artist Audio Messages. Artist Audio Messages, also known as AAMs, are short 15 second audio notes to your fans. They can be used to promote releases, tour dates, say thank you, or intro, or... Artist audio messages, also known as AAMs, are short 15 second audio notes to your fans. They can be used to promote releases and tour dates, as well as saying thank you at the beginning or end of a song. These messages also show a photo and a CTA, also known as call to action. This can be as simple as tap here to buy tickets in the text or tap the link on your screen to listen now, insert it into the audio. AAMs can run for up to one year once live. AAMs can run for up to one year once live. You can also set these messages to only play to listeners in specific locations. This is particularly... This is particularly... Oh my gosh. Particularly, this is particularly useful if you're promoting a. Okay, one more time. This is particularly useful if you're promoting a tour where you may only be performing in five cities. You can target listeners in those cities with your message. Ampcast allows you to record and upload messages from your phone within the Pandora app. You will need to log in with the same credentials you use for your Pandora. AMP account. Pandora Artist Bios. Pandora does not have a way for artists to directly upload their biography at this time. Artist Bios are hosted by TiVo. Yep, still the same company I mentioned before when we were talking about Cobuzz. TiVo's database is also shared with allmusic.com. To include your bio on Pandora, you will need to send an email to TiVo at content.music at TiVo.com. It can take a few weeks for this data to appear on allmusic.com and then on Pandora. Pandora Fresh Cuts Station. The team at Pandora curates a station that is focused on break artists that engage with their artist marketing platform and their account on social media. This Fresh Cuts station is currently open for submissions by posting a link to your track on Twitter and tagging at Pandora Amp in the post. Be sure to include the link to your track on Pandora and not... Be sure to include the link to your track on Pandora and not another streaming platform. You'd be surprised how many times I've seen artists do this. Pandora Lyrics. Pandora's lyrical content is hosted by Lyric Find. To add lyrics and have them displayed on Pandora, you'll need to contact Lyric Find through... Pandora's lyrical content is hosted by Lyric Find. To add lyrics and have them displayed on Pandora, you'll need to contact Lyric Find through their website or via your distributor. Looking for another reason to add your lyrics? Some people don't know the name of a song. Looking for another reason to add your lyrics? Some people don't know the name of a song, but they can recall and type part of the lyrics. They can speak or sing them to their smart speaker device. Alexa, Google, and Siri can all sync with Pandora. By adding lyrics, you allow people to find your... By adding lyrics, you allow people to find your song through keywords. <clears throat> P 
Pandora Track Reporting. Pandora provides comprehensive insights into a track's performance, including streams, radio spins, interactive plays, station ads, and thumbs up. All of this artist data can be exported as a CSV, allowing you to import it into the spreadsheet program of your choice. There are dedicated reporting pages for each track with line graphs for daily trends and a source breakdown which shows what programs a track is being streamed on. <clears throat> TikTok for artists. TikTok is one of the most addictive social media platforms of our time. Artists have opportunities to grow their audience on here through one of two ways. The first is creating videos using your music. The second is creating your own videos and growing a following on your TikTok profile. Here's what to do when you first download the app. Pick a username consistent with your other platforms, then connect your YouTube and Grip. Pick a username consistent with your other platforms, then connect your YouTube and Instagram profiles for cross-platform growth. For example, at AskMikeWarner is my handle on social media, including TikTok. Warm up your account for a few days before you start posting. Use the app like a regular user. Follow profiles and leave thoughtful comments on content you like. This is important to do before posting your first video because it teaches TikTok about your account. Post one high quality and engaging video with your target audience in mind. You can look at some of the first TikTok videos posted by artists similar to you for inspiration. With your first few posts, TikTok's algorithm will begin working out and understanding who you are, what you are, and who with your first few posts, TikTok's algorithm will be working to understand who you are, what you are about, and who to show your TikTok videos to. Make sure to post consistently, but not too much. As a guide, in the first two weeks, post two videos per week at different times and watch to see which video has more engagement. Pay attention to things like time of day, Pay attention to things like time of day posted, hashtags used, content, quality, and length. You can link to a web version of your public TikTok profile that can be shared anywhere. Simply use this URL format. If your TikTok handle is at AskMikeWarner, your TikTok web link is tiktok.com slash at AskMikeWarner. Most content on the platform can be viewed on the web browser without even being logged in. Bonus tip. If you find TikTok users creating videos with your music, you can save or share these videos to social media. It's free content and a great way to thank the creator. Mm. TikTok audio preview start times. Ever find yourself scrolling through TikTok and notice that the catchiest part of the song is always used? This is no coincidence. When music is uploaded through a distributor, there is an option to specify the start time for audio previews. This means that if people preview the song in iTunes or Apple Music, it will begin playing exactly at the timestamp you specified in the preview to start. This also applies to TikTok and is super valuable if someone wants to include your song in their video. It's no secret that hit songs like Lizzo, Troop Hurts, have a very strategic preview start time. For those that aren't familiar, the clip starts with, I just took a DNA test, turns out I'm 100%. Many distributors will allow Many distributors will allow artists to go and update the preview clip start time for music that has already been released. This avoids the need to redistribute music that is already live. 
I'm going to do that one one more time. <clears throat> Many distributors will allow artists to go and update the preview clip start time for music that has already been released. This avoids the need to redistribute music that is already live. Bonus tip. Some artists have seen significant success with a song on TikTok when a clip goes viral. Users start searching for the song it uses. Make sure you have added your lyrics in the services mentioned earlier. Some artists have even renamed a track so the song title matches the most recognizable part of the lyrics. YouTube Official Artist Channels As an artist, there's a good chance some of your music is already on YouTube in one form or another. You may have uploaded some live footage or your distributor may have added it to one of those artist name topic channels. Now there's a way to merge all of these videos from various channels into one official artist channel. Now, before you say, I looked into this and it was way too hard because I didn't have X, just stop right there. Things have changed. Previously, you needed free music videos to be delivered to YouTube via a distributor before you could claim your official artist channel. But now the requirement is free releases via a distributor. This means even audio releases count. According to artists, according to artists, .youtube.com, all artists can now claim an official artist channel, also known as OAC. YouTube launched OACs in 2018, allowing artists to merge multiple channels into one official channel. If you have songs uploaded by a record label on one channel, or songs uploaded by Vivo or your distributor, also known as Topic Channels, these will now be merged into also known as topic channels, these will now be merged into one official artist channel. Official artist channels can be spotted because there will be a musical note after the artist's name. OACs will have a playlist called Music Videos that features all songs that have been distributed to YouTube. These no longer appear under artist name topic channels and will automatically be added to this playlist on the official artist channel on YouTube. Here's what you need to know about YouTube OACs. Organized content. The channel layout automatically organizes your discography into an album section and your official music videos into new playlists. This is to ensure a consistent fan experience across to ensure a consistent fan experience across YouTube, you can't edit these playlists. However, you can place a separate section above your locked video and album sections to promote anything you like. Discoverability in search. When your fans search for you on YouTube, they'll be linked directly to your OAC from your watch card on the right side of the screen. Promotional content. Choose what you want to highlight in the dedicated promotional shelf and in the featured video slot. Fan engagement. One verified, unified channel where you can directly reach and engage with your fans on YouTube. These above notes were taken from a support article that can be found on YouTube's support page. The latest YouTube artists of The latest YouTube artist support article states, quote, if you work with a label, comma, did you, why am I saying comma out loud? Fuck. <laughs> God, I, I use voice to text to send text messages. And for a second there, I was just like, I'm sending, we're, <laughs> we're good. Um, <laughs> I got this. I got this. <laughs>
The latest YouTube artist support article states, quote, if you work with a label, digital distributor, or have a partner manager, get in touch with them to get an official artist channel, end quote. However, no form or link is provided and there is no mention of which digital distributors are able to handle official artist channel requests. So artists that are signed to a record label or have a partner manager for YouTube are set. But what about the independent artists? I did some research and compiled a list of digital distributors that can help. CD Baby. Request access in the Tools section. DistroKid. Request access via the Settings menu. Once you have claimed your channel, you will receive a confirmation email from YouTube with new ways you can connect with your fans using community posts, mobile live streams, tickets, and comment hearts. YouTube Analytics for Artists Artists on YouTube are finally getting access to more data and insights. YouTube has finally announced their much-awaited analytics product for artists. Bypassing any beta release, quote, new YouTube analytics for artists, end quote, is now live. Yep, the word new is part of the title. It's available for all artists with an OAC. Here's the announcement from studio.youtube. Here's the announcement from studio.youtube.com. Quote, the new analytics for artists is here, giving artists the most comprehensive and complete view of their audience, global reach, and performance across YouTube. Visit studio.youtube.com to check it out. Analytics for artists will be available for all official artist channels and provide access to a unique... Analytics for artists will be available for all official artist channels and... Analytics for artists will be available for all official artist channels and provide access to a unique set of features that will equip artists and their teams with the knowledge they need to make the most informed and strategic rail... Equip artists and their teams with the knowledge they need to make the most informed and strategic release plans. In addition to desktop, artists can now easily access these new insights on the YouTube Studio mobile app, enabling them to get data and notification updates in real time, whether they are on the road or in the studio. End quote. Artists with an official artist channel can view their stats at studio.youtube.com or by downloading the YouTube Studio app. The YouTube Studio app. The YouTube Studio app is available on Android and Apple devices. YouTube Artist Image. Studio.youtube.com allows artists with an OAC to add a bio, photos, and create artist playlists on their profile. The photos uploaded can be seen on YouTube search, YouTube charts, the YouTube music app, playlists, and banners. YouTube will ask you to upload the same image twice in different dimensions. One of the images will be used in YouTube and the other will be used in the YouTube music app. To add this, go to studio.youtube.com, click on profile, Enter your name and bio, pick a high quality photo, using the pencil icon at a square pref, pick a high quality photo, and then using the pencil icon at a square profile photo and a rec, pick a high quality photo, and finally using the pencil icon at a square profile photo and a rectangular profile photo. Yeah, yeah, I'm good with that.
<laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. You know, with here you go, okay, an extra chapter is 45 seconds. Easy. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> cool. All right. YouTube artist bio. Again, this is done by logging into studio.youtube.com. Once accepted, your bio can be seen on YouTube search, your channel, and the YouTube music app. To update your bio, select anywhere in the biography box, enter your bio and select save bio. Be sure to follow these guidelines to make sure it doesn't get taken down by YouTube. Keep it under 1500 characters, after 150 characters, YouTube Music truncates it and keep it under one. Keep it under 1,500 characters. After 150 characters, YouTube Music truncates it and puts the remaining bio behind a more link. Make sure the content meets their community guidelines. Keep your bio up to date. Promoting an upcoming album or new release in your bio may go out of date quickly. YouTube Community Posts and Fan Engagement YouTube OACs also have access to a new feature in the Community tab. YouTube OACs also have features... Holy shit. I'm making up words. YouTube... OACs also have access to a new feature. In the Community tab, artists can create posts with text, images, GIFs, playlists, vids. YouTube OACs also have access to a new feature. In the Community tab, artists can create posts with text, images, playlists, videos and polls. You can even tag other channels in your posts by using at followed by the channel name. These posts can also be scheduled for a later date. In addition to liking and disliking comments on your videos, you can also heart comments. Your fans can also see when you heart their comments. This allows for re-engagement as they receive a notification when you do. YouTube Guide for Artists This guide was contributed by a good friend who wanted to remain anonymous. Best Practice for YouTube Video Optimization Artists have a fundamental misunderstanding of what YouTube's core product is. It's not a video audio hosting service. It's a content recommendation engine. The key to YouTube's growth as a platform and its value to artists is its suggested videos recommendation algorithm. Artists who are already using the platform to discover music and want to make the most of YouTube's recommendation algorithm and tap into its huge global audience of active users should fully optimize their YouTube content along with their channels. This gives the algorithm the correct information it needs to serve their content to new audiences on YouTube. YouTube algorithm quickly explained. YouTube's recommendation engine serves content using their North Star metric of watch time per impression. This means the longer your video can retain a viewer impacting watch time, the more likely the YouTube algorithm. This means the longer the video. This means the longer your video can retain a viewer, impacting watch time, the more likely the YouTube algorithm will be able to recommend your content to new audiences. To YouTube, an engaging 15 minute long content piece has more long-term potential reach than a three minute long music video. So your long form video content strategy and YouTube strategy should be one and the same. After release, 80% of a video's views will come within the first 10 days. 
unless reinserted into the recommendation algorithm. Subscribers and previous viewers are served a new video within the first 48 hours and YouTube will continue to surface the video within the homepage and browse section for the next 10 days before making long-term suggestions Long-winded. Okay, I got it. <clears throat> Subscribers and previous viewers are served a new video within the first 48 hours, and YouTube will continue to surface the video within the homepage and browse section for the next 10 days before making long-term suggestions within the homepage browse section for the next 10 days before more long-term suggestions take over. <laughs> okay, one more time, I got this, I got this. <clears throat> Subscribers and previous viewers are served a new video within the first 48 hours, and YouTube will continue to surface the video within the homepage and browse section for the next 10 days before more long-term suggestions take over from the three to six week mark onwards, if you've satisfied the algorithm. The first 48 hours to 10 days of a video's lifetime are crucial to its long-term viability on YouTube. So it pays to maximize your impact at launch by ensuring your content is properly optimized for YouTube. Optimizing video metadata improves Optimizing video metadata improves search results and YouTube recommendations over time so views continue to flow in incrementally after release. YouTube video optimizations. Note, these video optimizations are only for OAC uploads and don't apply to YouTube audio products delivered to YouTube via a distributor. How to optimize your videos. Track title. A YouTube video title is made up of two parts. The information, artist name, content keywords, and the hook, what happens. Emotion driven, tease of content. Video title. Video titles are one of the most important YouTube indexes for search. So you must always ensure that you have your critical keywords included when relevant. Official music video. For music videos, live for live performances, artist or track for covers, acoustic for acoustic renditions, location if relevant to a content piece, for example live at Wembley Arena, year if a video is current or old enough to be nostalgic, year if a video is current or old enough to be nostalgic, you will also want to keep a consistent structure with titles and punctuation, for example, artist name, hyphen, track name, critical keyword. YouTube thumbnails. Thumbnails are important. Thumbnails are the important feature of a YouTube video as it acts as a front window to any potential viewer who may be deciding whether or not to watch your video. This is also the hardest topic for blanket suggested optimizations all suggest this is also the hardest topic for blanket suggested optimizations as all suggestions are very okay I got it this is also the hardest topic for blanket suggested optimizations as all suggestions are very case by case your safest bet is choosing an engaging and eye-catching screen grab from within the video Usually this involves a well-lit close-up of the artist's face with eye contact and conveyed emotion. The thumbnail must be engaging and there must be synergy between the title and the thumbnail. Track. Track meta description structure. A video's meta description is the a video's meta description is the keyword rich text that YouTube indexes for search results. You want to include as many relevant text and keywords in there as possible without spamming. Here's a good video description template example taken from a well-optimized artist video on YouTube. 
The first line of a video's meta description must directly reflect. The first line of a video's meta description must directly reflect the title of the video. Any added copy for context. Links to any streaming, social, or sales sites. Song lyrics. Song lyrics must go in the video description in case listeners are searching for the lyrics. Lyrics on YouTube without knowing the track name. Song lyrics. Song lyrics must go in the video description in case. Song lyrics must go in the video description in case listeners are searching for a song by song lyrics on YouTube without knowing the track name. Artist bio. Keyword rich, artist specific text at the bottom of the meta description. Video keywords. Take advantage of the 500 characters available when adding tags and keep in mind that SEO keywords for musicians are branded and specific. You're looking to align your video keywords with specific terms that users are already searching for on Google when they search for you. For example, song name, lyrics, artist name, live, artist name, acoustic, etc. This will require some keyword research on your behalf. A general template for YouTube keywords would be as follows. Band specific, track specific, other top performing tracks from that artist, lyrics, band member names, video specific, for example, live, acoustic, year of recording. Video end screens. A standardized end screen. A standardized end screen template. One more. A standardized end. A standardized end screen template across all videos is a must as it creates extended viewing sessions for listeners who finish your videos. Viewers who complete a video are looking for their next content piece to watch. Viewers who complete a video are looking for their next content piece to watch, so you want to make sure you provide that to them with an end screen. A good template includes the following elements. A channel subscribe button, link to official music video, YouTube playlist, A good template includes the following elements. A channel subscribe button, link to official music video YouTube playlist, and the best for audience algorithmic suggestion that YouTube pulls from the artist's channel. This guide was contrib This guide was contributed by a good friend who wanted to remain anonymous. How we doing? Holy moly. Page 129. I know I know some of that was a table of contents, but wow. Knowing how long the book is, that's good because if it, it feels like the halfway point. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Oh man, there's a few points there where I'm like, I can hear it. I can hear my voice starting to just give up. And I'm like, nah, not yet. We got lots more to go. <laughs> wow. All right. I'm going to stand up, see if my legs still work. Ah. Oh.